Since the dawn of time, society has been divided between those who follow the rules and those who break them. For the good people of Middletown, only one thing stands between them and a rising tide of violence and degeneracy. You. Hello, and welcome to Survival Skills, a new training video from Survival Solutions created specifically for the graduates of the Middletown Police Academy. In the next hour, we're going to be providing you with the information you need to transition from your training into an active field position. Now, I know you have a lot of questions and we'll get to them, but right now, there's somebody I'd like for you to meet. Hello. Do you know what your name is? I sure don't. Your name is Jim, and you're a policeman. Hmm. I don't know if I have what it takes. Well, are you brave? I think so. Are you compassionate? Sure. Are you a hard worker? You bet. Then you'll be A-OK. -okay. The most important qualities a policeman can have are honesty, diligence, and a commitment to justice, no matter what. That sounds like me. Sure does. Now, Jim, we're going to follow you through your first year as a police officer. And I won't lie, it's not going to be easy. But at the end of it, you will have learned some valuable survival skills. And you will, too. Now, let's get started. Welcome to Middletown, USA. Population, 34,000. It's a typical American town, 89% white, with a median income of $70,000. In 1988, the town voted overwhelmingly for Ronald Reagan, despite the fact that he was not running for election. This is the town Jim will call home. We're putting Jim in a sensible two-bedroom house in the suburbs, the kind of place no one would ever want to leave. Now, first things first, let's get Jim dressed. Oh, no. That may work for the ball game, but it doesn't meet the high standards of the Middletown PD. But that's better. What's this? Uh-oh. Now. I know you're curious about that gun, Jim, but that's another video. You're not going to need that gun. Something we often forget is that police officers are real people with real lives. Let's give Jim a life of his own. And what home would be complete without a lady of the house? I make my own jam. Now, let's get Jim to work. Wish me luck, honey. Luck! You Jim? Yes, ma'am. I don't want to be, you know, unkind or anything, but just so you are aware, I did not request you. Oh. In fact, I requested not you. How old are you? I'm 30. Right. And you seem kind of keen for an old guy, which worries me. I don't need a bunch of fucking questions all the time. Questions certainly can be annoying. Okay. I'm here after you. I've been doing this a long time. So just do what I tell you, follow the rules, and you'll be fine. I'm excited to learn. Whatever you say. Whatever you say, boss. Oh, my God.
10 4, 10 4. This is unit 11. The job of a policeman is unpredictable. It could be a speeding stop or a cat stuck up in a tree. Who knows? Oh. Oh. Well, cadets, it's not all sunshine and lollipops out there. Sometimes you have to get tough. And Jim's first assignment is about the toughest there is. But before we get started, let's take a look at some basic principles. Domestic violence calls are notoriously unpredictable, emotional, and deadly. And we've developed a five-step plan to help you navigate these tricky situations. And we call this the SMEN system. The first step is S. Safe approach. Step two is make notes. As you enter, make a note of everything that is or could be a weapon. Step three is E, emotions. Before you say anything, look carefully at the faces of any occupants in the room. Step four is N, partition. Try using an open-armed herding technique like you'd use with cattle. And finally, step five, S. S stands for solve. Once they've calmed down, bring the disputants back together and have a frank, honest talk about what happened. Everyone is calm and no one gets hurt. Smens. Now, let's see how Jim does. Thank you for that. Will you just okay. stop it? Jim, no, everything's fine. We're all holding hands. You can move her up there. Stop there. Stop there. Stop there. there. Stop 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 there. So what was the fight about? Nothing. Nothing. Look, I'm not proud of this, but we were arguing and I was I was belittling her intelligence. She never finished college. She's insecure about it. She, she feels like she can't get a job, like she's dependent on me. And sometimes I needle her about it when I'm stressed out at work. But that's, that's no excuse. I, I know that. So that's it? Yeah. Okay. That was very stressful. Everybody was yelling at each other. It was so loud. I'm sorry. Is it always like this for you here? Don't worry. We'll get this sorted out. He'll never hurt you again. That's a promise. Uh, 
Uh, are you gonna ask me what happened? Oh, uh, I don't know. Am, am I supposed to? I... That's what they usually do. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> what happened? You know, it's... It's funny, you know, where I'm from, we, we would have fights like this all the time. Oh, it's, so, it's no big deal. So you're saying it was just <laughs> an argument? It's a stupid argument. <laughs> Are you sure that you don't want to? You no, know, to be honest, I don't, I don't really want to talk about it. It's, uh, this is embarrassing. Your daughter seemed pretty upset. She, uh, she, she's actually my stepdaughter. If you need anything, either of you, for any reason, let us know. Absolutely. 100%. Thanks, Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Thanks, officers. Um, I'm new to this, so I defer to you totally. But it seems to me, and, and again, forgive me if it's inappropriate to Jesus Christ, kid. I feel strongly that we were being lied to by one or both parties in there. Oh, do you? And that abuse was indeed taking place, despite their assurances to the contrary. Well, thank God you're here. Well, so can we arrest them? Doesn't work that way. Well, it should. Yeah, well, if she's okay with him using her as a punchy bank, there's a goddamn thing we can do. But if we separate them... You're not listening to me. If there's a child involved, it's our... Hey! It is your first day. Maybe shut the fuck up for a minute. I'm sorry. You seem upset. Were you abused as a child? Domestic violence cases present more than just physical danger for law enforcement officers. The emotional strain of returning again and again to an abusive home can take a toll on the officers themselves. Officers can become so, so heartbroken that they're tempted to break the rules and contact the abused party. And while this desire comes from a noble place, it often leads to more heartbreak, more anger, and more violence. But not every case is quite so grim. Today, Jim has been called to arrest a local shoplifter who may be a little different than he's expecting. I'm just so sorry. I mean, this isn't him, you know? I... But his mother uh, just passed. And... Oh, you, you know that. I understand, sir. But the store owner will need to be reimbursed. I know. And, and we will pay every penny somehow. Just, uh... Look, don't... Don't drag the kid into this. I could really go for a cup of joe. Cup of, oh. Yeah, sure. Oh. Hey. Would you like to race? Why not? Just here for the win. Hmm. I bet you're right. What if I race with the truck and you race with the cruiser? On your marks, get set, and go! go. Whoa! <laughs> Mine didn't go anywhere. Go! Oh, you just hit me! I understand. I know that you're 
As a police officer, it's important to forge close ties with your community. But it's also important to make sure you remain professional and never personal. You can care, care them? Ma'am, uh, we can take care of this one. Let's give Jim something else to worry about. Tonight's a big night for Jim. It's his first night on his own. But it hasn't gone exactly the way Jim thought it would. In nine hours on duty, Jim has issued one speeding ticket and responded to a call about a stolen bike. If you ever find yourself getting bored on the job, just think. Thank God no one's in trouble. But why not give Jim a little excitement? Sir! Sir, could you please return to your vehicle? Care to remove your helmet? Could you remove your helmet for me, please? You were going pretty fast, sir. Got up to double the speed limit. Kids could be playing around here. License, registration, and proof of insurance, please. I would consider it a personal favor. Sir, I must ask you to please Keep your distance. Uh, don't. You are hurt. Yes. Do you sometimes think that the assumptions you've made about life and people are wrong? And that you're unqualified to make decisions for yourself? If you can't make decisions, who will make them for you? Oh, the rules. I'm really grateful for that. I've already been tended to. You're embarrassed. I feel stupid. Everyone will see my face and know what happened. Jenny? Jenny? There. Now we are the same. So I got uh, sent on a kind of domestic call. Uh, Fourteen-year-old girls having it out with her grandparents. She calls her grandma a bitch, tells her to shut up. So I lay out some ground rules. I talk about 
you know, family, responsibility, drugs, sex, stuff. The girl's generally happy. She even laughs a little bit. I tell her she's grounded for the night, and I take off. About an hour later, suicide kicks out. 14-year-old girl has cut herself up with a razor. Sure as shit, same girl. Not fucking believable. So I go over there. There she is, arms wrapped up in a towel. I ask her how we got from cleaning our room to carving ourselves up. I mean, what the hell happened in the 60 minutes I was gone, right? So I... man, you know? <clears throat> That's just the stuff you see yourself. Never mind the stuff you hear about, like, uh... Like the kid who was run over by a forklift. The roofer who falls and breaks his neck in half. The construction worker that gets eat up by an auger. The decomposing man on the white leather couch. The old man on the toilet, the little girl in the wheel well, and on 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 and You doing all right? I'm aware of the emotional toll of a policeman's life, and I've taken steps to ensure that I remain with a normal emotional balance. That's how I describe you. People ask, and I'd say, he's within normal emotional bounds. Take care of yourself, RoboCop. Even for a busy cop, it's important to make time for your loved ones. And so Jim decided to head home. And so Jim decided to head home. And so, are you listening to me? Jim? Hello? Hello? This is off. Let's try that again, shall we? Everybody makes mistakes. But as long as you learn from... What are you doing? I just told you. The mark of a good cop is that he never makes the same mistake three times. Jim, you think of what you're doing. What if Mark is home? What if she won't talk to you? What if she tells the chief that one of his officers is harassing her? Just hang up, Jim. Jim, this is your final warning. Jim! Hello? Hello? 
this is Officer Williams we met the other day. My husband's not here. Actually, I was hoping to speak to you. Do you have a second? Is there something I can help you with, officer? I was hoping to speak to you about your situation over there. What about it? It's clear to me that not only are you in a physically abusive relationship, but that you're willing to lie to the police to protect it. I want to reassure you that we have excellent resources here at the department. We can make sure that Mark never comes within a mile of you or your daughter. Furthermore, if you're worried that you'd be financially compromised without him, I will make it my personal mission to see that doesn't happen. If you won't do it for yourself, do it for your daughter. Officer Williams, don't call this number again. Uh, hold on a second. Where's the damn script? In your first year as a law enforcement officer, you'll face your share of temptation. If you found yourself in this sort of situation, who would you turn to? Your chief, your priest, a favorite teacher from high school? All acceptable. In Jim's case, he turns to the man who knows him best, his father. Well, I, I can't say that I know what to tell you, son. Oh, it's a, it's a very complicated situation. I was hoping you might tell me to follow my heart. Oh. Well, instincts are important, son. But so is following the rules. But then again, so are instincts. And, and following the rules also is important, I mean. There wasn't a child involved. Oh, son, lots of kids grow up getting hit. I did, and I'm fine. If I can help, I should. I want to. It sounds like you're having doubts. I I'm not. Or maybe I don't know. You know what they say about doubt, son. What? Well, in Matthew 21, 21, Jesus says, truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. I think I think I can see that. I think I understand that. Bully for you, son. Always good to see you, son. Now get out there and catch some bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's over like bam! You think it's gonna be like, huh? You think your guy's just gonna stand there like, oh, hey, officer, let me just take my knife out real slowly. Wrong! Do you know what safe combat distance is from a knife combatant? 21 feet minimum. That doesn't matter if I'm fighting in an open street, a crowded room, or on my house boat. Now, can I get a volunteer? Awesome. 
I love your energy. What's your name? Jim. Now, say I come at you with a reverse grip, slashing side to side like this. What's your best defense? Well, first I would evaluate whether the subject is a violence risk. I would then perform the five components of arrest. A verbal warning, approach of the subject, We'll cover this later. And finally, the handcuffing and reading of rights. OK. Let's see how that plays out for you. Stop, citizen. Let's get one thing straight. You want to arrest somebody with a knife? You got to have your gun out. When someone's coming after you for real with a knife, you're not going to be ready. I promise you. OK, pair off and let's practice some shit. And one, and two, and three, and four. And five, and six. He's right. The world of a law enforcement officer is dangerous and unpredictable. But if you follow the instructions outlined in this video, you'll have the skills you'll need to survive. And now, let's look at knife wounds. Gross. That guy died. Good morning, Jim. How'd you sleep? Excellent. Well, you got another busy day ahead of you. And no time to waste. A healthy breakfast. A kiss from Ginny. Wish me luck, honey. Luck! And Jim's out the door. No, you stop. <laughs> Meg, how's Steve doing at Little League? You know, he ever wants to practice. I used to have a mean swing. Jam! My name's Karen. Oh, go on. <laughs> you wanted to see me, Chief? Yes, hi. Come on in. Well, listen, gosh, you have had one heck of a month here, haven't you? Well. I, uh, I received a letter yesterday from Mr. Howard Skelman. He says, Stephanie's widower. You responded to a call at his home? Yes, sir. It says here in the report that uh, there wasn't any food in the house and, uh, and that the son had been shoplifting. Yes, sir. It also says in the letter that uh, you purchased $200 worth of groceries and, uh, and delivered them to his home. Have I done something wrong, sir? Listen. The only reason I know about this is because I received this letter from Mr. Skelman. Now, maybe you were nervous because, uh, well, maybe you thought you'd cross the lines or something. But I just have to say that I think what you did was wonderful. It was really, really wonderful. Should I hug you? No, no, that's OK. I mean, after all, you're the, uh, <laughs> you're the hero here, right? I'm just a side character. Oh, listen, uh, Allison says that uh, you're, uh, you're getting a little too close to the, uh, to the Jenning case. She does? Uh, if I were you, I'd, uh, I'd stay clear of that situation. I actually spoke with my father about it, and we agreed that it's best if I just forget it. OK, then. <laughs> Have a great day. <laughs> Margaret, can I get a? Doesn't work. Phone doesn't work. Well, it looks like Jim's really making a name for himself. But there's never a good time to let your guard down. Parents and teachers around the country are increasingly concerned about the threat of satanic ritual abuse. Is Satan real? Does he create obstacles in your life? 
we can't say. But the satanic movement, born in heavy metal concerts and abortion clinics across America, is very real. This is the police. Hello? What's your emergency? Uh, yes, hello. I um, I live on Cherry Crest, and I just saw a group of teenagers entering a house across the street. Okay, ma'am, can you please tell me exactly what you saw? I, I've been hearing some sounds that are they're kind of like chanting sounds, and I, and I saw on the news where some teenagers have been sneaking into houses and worshipping Satan. So I, I just wanted to alert law enforcement. I feel very unsafe, and I would appreciate if the police would do something about this. You guys ready? Okay, so... <clears throat> a cold fog rises around you as you venture into the cave. Hold up, I'm not going into any cave. What? You sort of gotta go into the cave. Don't be a dick, Dave. It's so obviously a trap, I just don't well, know why okay, we... Okay, okay, just let me, let me hear, okay? So, so, your footsteps, they echo off of the bare walls as you go deeper and deeper into the cave. Fuck you, man. I don't want to go into the cave. You're on your own, man. Dude, oh, okay. you're not playing the game right. Dude, I thought the whole point is we can do whatever we want, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You're being Whoa. a boner to... This is your great fantasies? No, you want to go into a cave? No, it's fucking stupid. Stop being such a fag, dude. Hey, fuck you, man. You don't get to call me a no, fag, ass. Fuck you. You're in my house, man. Why don't you go through your action figures, man? No, hey, stop no, it. What are you doing? Stop. Fuck. Man, you hit me right by fucking nose. No, I'm not freeze. Turn that off. We weren't doing anything. Whatever happened to a good old game of Monopoly? It's not like we're hurting anybody. You're hurting yourselves. Whose house is this? You. If I come back here and you don't have at least one decent American hobby, I will put you in jail for the rest of your life. Now go on, get out of here. Oh, yes. Our parents must be worried sick. They didn't have the rainbow kind. Yeah, that, that's okay. Mm. Mm. So do you want to tell me what's going on? Why don't you want to go home, Lauren? I just don't. Is it safe for you there? You know, I only want what's best for you, right? I promise. No matter what happens, I will protect you. 
and your mom. You know that, right? Lauren, please just talk to your mom for me. I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. Just tell her that that if she really cares about you, that she'll contact me. You can tell her that, right? Lauren? I understand what you're going through, and I'm offering you my support and my concern. I don't need concern. I need money. Can you help? What? Just enough to get through a trial? Yes. I can. How? The case is pretty clear cut. You could be looking at sizable damages. Child support, of course, if it goes your way. If? I'd say you have a pretty strong case, wouldn't you? Even if I win the case, Mark's got enough money to spin it out for months. And where am I supposed to stay then? Where, where is Lauren going to stay? I'll tell you what. If nothing else works, you can stay with us. Me and Jenny. She's my girlfriend. Well, thank you, Officer Williams. I think I'd like to handle this myself. Mrs. Jennings, please. Please do not call my house again. There are other avenues we can explore. Like what? OK. OK. There is a receptionist position opening up at the precinct. You can't offer me that. Let me try. There are a number of resources from the battered women's shelter and contributions from my church. Please, let me do this. Please. If I were to agree, what would happen next? This is Officer Jim Williams with the Middletown Police Department. Today is the 2nd of June, and it is 10.53 in the morning, and we are interviewing Lauren Jenning. Jennings? Jenning. That's J-E-N-N-I-N-G? Yep. Awesome. And how old are you, Lauren? 16. Great. And where do you go to school? Middletown Prep. How do you like it? It's pretty fun, actually. What's your favorite class? Um, I guess photography. My dad got me this camera. He did? Great. It's cool sometimes. Great. So, before we get started, there are a few rules. <clears throat> First, 
If I ask you a question and you don't know the answer, just say you don't know. Second, if I get something wrong, I want you to correct me. And third, it's really important that we only talk about the truth. So, do you promise to tell the truth? Yeah. Okay. So, Lauren, can you tell me why we're talking today? Um. I don't know. If I do something or get something wrong, um, sometimes my dad hurts me. Can you tell me about the last time your dad hit you? He doesn't hit me. What does he do? Um, like one time I came home from school and I went to go get something to eat. Apparently that's not okay. And he got really mad. And he told me to take off my shoes. It's like a fishing line. What happened next? Um, you know, I tried to run away and grab me. It's like yelling, like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be doing homework. He was yelling this. Yeah. I don't know. He's like, you're going to get bad grades. Mom's going to be so mad at you. Worthless. I don't know. I can't remember. OK. No, and he like wrapped the fishing line around my foot <laughs> until it started bleeding, and I couldn't really walk. It's kind of in shock, but I guess he's done stuff like this before, so. And to your stepmom. My mom, you can just call her my mom. Does he abuse her as well? Obviously. Obviously. What other things has he done? I don't know. You know, he's fine sometimes. We go take photos together. He's actually a really good photographer. You, you say he's done other things. He's never, like, touched me like that. What kind of stuff would he do? Do we have to do this? I'm sorry. I don't get ready for school in time. Takes my arm in the front door and slams it. Uh, he burned my arm with a lighter. I used to bend my fingers back until I would scream. One time he filled up the bathtub with ice and made me sit in it. He, ugh, he threatens to kill me a lot. <laughs> I think we've gotten off track here. Uh, let's see if we can refocus and get back to our original purpose. 
And while we recalibrate, take a moment to enjoy our previous educational video. Use of force in public spaces. Procedures and practices to control dangerous situations in public spaces with a special emphasis on crowd containment and analysis and implementation of appropriate use of force in situations that may present challenges to traditional models of law enforcement threat analysis. Part one. Meet Jane. Just like you, Jane is a graduate of the Middletown Police Academy. Let's follow Jane as she navigates the pitfalls of her first year of active duty with the Middletown Police Department. In this scenario, Jane must make a decision about the appropriate level of force to be used on a group of protesters who are congregating illegally. Folks! Folks! Can you keep it down for a moment so we can talk? There are other areas for you to gather. You're breaking the law here. Folks, I don't like it any better than you do, but you're gonna have to move along. Not a chance. We're not leaving until we get answers. Yeah! yeah. Sir, I'm gonna need you. You don't know what hard times are. I put my heart and soul into this company, and they're sending our jobs overseas. Yeah. I put my heart and soul into this company. Now they put, uh, I put my heart and soul into this company. Fuck. Sir, I need you to. You don't know what hard times are. I put my heart and soul into this company. Now they're sending our jobs overseas. Yeah. I'm gonna need you to. Drop the sign now. This communist has just crossed the line from verbal threats to physical menace. Should Jane A issue a verbal warning? B, draw her sidearm, C, move to a tactically advantageous position, or D, all of the above. Drop the sign, now! If you answered A or B, congratulations, you're correct. Were you able to identify the threat and Jane's response? Was her response appropriate? In a similar situation, what would you do? What are you doing? What about the force evaluation scene? It's very important. Damn it! Has everyone gone crazy but me? There is nothing left to learn from Jim Williams. I would know, wouldn't I? It's my story. I'm the goddamn narrator! I bought you an extra burger. How's the case going? Uh, I'm trying my best to avoid it. I realize my, my objectivity has been impaired. 20 bucks says he gets a slap on the wrist. You know we're not allowed to gamble. Yeah, well, you're taking a hell of a gamble on this lady. If she doesn't show up for you... She'll testify. She said she would. What? Why wouldn't she testify? Because people are terrible, rookie. I, I'm not saying that every person is terrible, but as a group, people are just a nightmare. They whip shit at a patrol car, take shots at you. Even if you're just sitting, having lunch, they call you fuckhead or whatever. <laughs> and then these same assholes, they're the ones that come crying to you when something goes wrong for them. It's just a cradle of the grave nightmare. Allison? I think you shouldn't be a police officer. Have you been accused of domestic violence? Don't wait. Contact Rick Bell. He'll get you off. When a policeman pressured my wife into accusing me of domestic abuse, I thought I was done for. But Rick Bell sure showed that guy what's what. Thanks, Rick Bell. Thanks, Rick Bell. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Rick Bell.
search him. And it's part of the car. It <laughs> it muffles the engine. <laughs> Now, a lot of people are confused by this passage. Uh, why is Jesus, the Son of God, yelling at a fig tree? Have you heard the phrase, God works in mysterious ways? Truly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. Oh, heck, I know everybody's just uh, <clears throat> praying for the Seahawks right now, so um, I'm going to let you out of here in just one second. But first, we've got a little housekeeping. Uh, first, uh, Jim Williams has an announcement to make. Thank you, Father. Friends, <clears throat> I'm here to appeal to your charity. Uh, there's a local woman who is trying to get out of an abusive relationship. Her name is Leah, Leah Jenning. And uh, with Father Branner's blessing, today's collection plate will go to finding her a place to live. So if you can find it in your hearts to give a little extra, or if anyone would be willing to open up their homes to this poor woman, I'd appreciate it. Anything would help. She's real desperate. Uh, thanks. All right, folks, let's get out of here. Go Hawks! I don't understand. Officer Williams, we are desperately underfunded. Government subsidies are down in half because of Reagan. Fucking Reagan. Corporate sponsorship has dried up. Personal donations are down. We just, we just don't have the resources for what you're asking. I thought this was a shelter. We can provide a 30-day stay for one woman or a two-week stay for a woman plus a kid. Well, that's well, not enough time. Their trial that's is That's what we offer. You're really going to turn her away? I turn women away all the time, officer. They are both extremely fragile, and their court date is in 17 days. And if the mother doesn't feel supported, she may not testify, and then they'll be thrown right back into a violent and potentially fatal situation. You don't want to be responsible for that, do you? Will you excuse me? I've got work to do. I'm sorry if I spoke out of turn. I wish I could help you, officer. Well, if you, if you change your mind, I think we're making definite progress. What, what does that mean? Really great steps in a positive direction. We, we, we can't sleep on your floor forever. I understand that. Yeah, I think we're really close. They said no. Look at this. Today, we made $47.18. <laughs> what about the, the uh, receptionist thing? I, I haven't been able I think that there are other more promising avenues for us to explore. You're killing us. Well, I appreciate your anxiety. I, I do not share your sentiment. OK. OK. What about the shelter? 30 days for one of you or two weeks for both of you. 
We've got 17 more days before a preliminary hearing. I, I want you to trust that I'm doing my best. Oh, no, no. I get that. Look, we'll, uh, we'll do the shelter for as long as we can. If you're After sure. After that. Nice job, RoboCop. I would really appreciate it if you didn't talk like that. Is it my scene now? Yes. It's your scene. You're leaving? Yes. Why? It's not because of your job. Yes, it is. It has to be. Late nights, worrying if I'm OK. It's not that. Are you trying to teach me a lesson? I'm not doing anything to you. Where will you go? Bowling Green, Florida. I sold my good dress and bought a Greyhound ticket. Bowling Green. Bowling Green. Isn't it beautiful? I would just like to point out that I'm capable of change. If there's something that you want that I'm not providing. I would be happy to provide it Bowling for you. Green. There are a number of possibilities I feel we should explore before committing Bowling ourselves irrevocably green. to some course Bowling of action. Green. I can mention how you're Bowling the only green. person around whom I can relax. Bowling I can green. tell you more that I feel that without you, I might have no clear reason for living. But in order to save time, I will be brief. Please don't go. Please don't go. Please don't leave me. Please. Please. I warned you. Didn't I warn you? Why don't you ever listen to me, Jim? What did you think was going to happen? That you were going to save the day? They were going to give you the keys to the city and throw a goddamn parade? That Leo would testify in open court against a man who had the power to destroy her? That a jury would side with her and her fucking court-appointed attorney? This is your fault! All your promises, all your lies, all your good intentions, you stupid, naive fucking child! Jesus Christ, Jim. What have you done?
Did your husband ever physically assault you? This is Jenning. try to save others from the things that we are afraid of ourselves. So this need to save everyone is simply an embodiment of your self-protective instincts. Let me ask you something. What would you be if you weren't a policeman? What do you mean? It will never happen again. I thought I was doing the right thing. Was it the kid? Did you grow up with an abusive dad or something? I was just trying to, trying to do the right thing. You know, my dad was like that. He was a, uh, he was a choker. He was? Yeah, he was. What do you want a speech? So I let you keep your badge, huh? You are some kind of lucky. besides a policeman? What kind of fucking question is that? I'm trying to do paperwork here. Meet Jim. He's 31 years old from Tacoma, Washington. He likes Eric Clapton, fishing, and going to the movies. And just like you, he's a graduate of the Middletown Police Academy. And though today might look like any other day, it's actually the last day of Jim's first year as a Middletown police officer. Yes, one year ago today, we met Jim. And by gosh, he's been through a lot, hasn't he? From that little motorcycle scrape to troubles at home to the other issue we won't talk about, Jim's been tested. Wish me luck, honey. But he's turned out A-OK. -okay. Good luck, honey. <laughs> he's forged good relationships with his colleagues. He's gained a sterling reputation in his community. And he's learned the importance of following department procedure at all times. It looks like Jim has gained the skills he needs to survive. And you can too. Hello? Yeah, is this Officer Williams? Speaking. 
The officer Williams had called my house. Oh, that that depends. Leah, it's... say hi to Officer Williams. <laughs> Mr. Jenny. Get me, you piece of shit. You okay? Oh, Jesus Christ. Listen, the detectives are all done with you, right? You're released. I'll be that on site, okay? Hey, listen. Um, they found them. Both of them, the daughter. And the mom, they're okay. They ran to a neighbor's house. I mean, they're not, they're not great, but they're breathing. That's interesting. Did you hear what I said? I said that they're okay. I'm going to go home now. I'm going to get some sleep. It's important to get sleep. And I'm going to get some. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you call me with anything, okay? You're way off script now, Jim. What will you do if you find him? Kill him? That uniform doesn't give you the right to kill whoever you want. And how will you find him? Jim? So, you're going home with nothing. Mark Jenning will never be caught. And you will live your life eaten up by guilt over what you've caused. Huh. Who knows? You may start drinking. <laughs> and before you know it, You'll be the one hitting your kid with the belt.
And that's what happens in real life. But this is not real. Oh, my God. 